back. So now we have our beautiful setup here, but now we want to kind of get it live. We want it on a production server so we can start actually playing with it for real, not this local stuff. We want some way to deploy it, change it, redeploy it, change it, redeploy it, and sit and test this for real. That's what I'm going to show you guys uh, doing a few steps and actually bringing this to Azure uh, server. And again, Azure is just my choice. I also decided to use Bitbucket instead of GitHub, again, because of the sensitive data. Again, that's up to you. If you use GitHub, you can use just the same setup I'm doing here, but pick GitHub instead of a Bitbucket. I'll explain that in a second. But the real goal is to get our actual REST API here so we don't have to write localhost anymore like we're doing here. But we can actually start writing some kind of URL directly that actually points to a real .NET web API somewhere. Yep. And let's get started. So first step is to go to Azure right here. Right now, notice this is my Bitbucket right here and here's the source code. Notice it's just the same as when you look at it on GitHub. Um, the only difference is kind of that it's shown a different way. That's all it is. It's still a GitHub repository, uh, sorry, a Git repository, just not a GitHub repository. Git can be used for many things. Good, so now we're on Azure right here and I jump into app services. I'm going to try and do this in one video, by the way, because this is just kind of extra stuff I'm adding. We can go into more details in uh, series five if we want to. So here on the GitHub, uh, sorry, on the Azure server, I'm jumping into app services. And there you see, I already have a few services running. I'll add a new app service right here. And when you add that, you get into another page and it asks what kind of app service do you want? And they have so many to pick from down here. You can pick whatever you want. Um, I'm going to pick the one that we need right now is the web app, the top one right here. So we click on that one. Then we can say create. Now there's a lot of stuff you can read, don't do that. I know what to do, so I'll just create it. I need to give it a name that's unique. So you need to figure out your own name that's unique out there and I'll just do CS2017. Look at it, that's already taken. I'll just do LBuilder. Now it's uh, unique, hopefully. Oh, I can't use the underscore, sorry about that. There we go. Now this is unique and this is going to be the name of the site I'm going to request on later. So it's going to be called CS27LBuilder.AssureWeb uh, site.net, right? I select the DreamSpark subscription. That's what my students get for free. I create a new uh, group or I use an existing one. Let's just use an existing one because I already have one here called CS2015. This is a server group that I already have available. You might have to go and build that yourself. Uh, I'm not going to show you this in, uh, that in this lesson, but we can extend on it if you need my help later on. And then I'll just have to create this guy now. I actually think if you don't want to use a service group already available, just create a new one. I don't think it's a big problem. You can just try and do it yourself. You can always delete everything you're doing here, so don't worry about it. It takes a bit of time when it shows this doodly doo up here, the, the thingy magoo building, and the deployment is now successful. So I've just created a new app service. Going into app services again, and notice now there's one called CS27 L Builder. Clicking that one, and now I just need to configure it. Our service is ready to be configured. Next step is to go down to deployment options down here and on deployment options, I'll click choose source because I need to explain to my web API, my REST API, how, what code do you need to run? So I'm going to configure settings here and notice you can choose Visual Studio, that's a choice, or you can go GitHub or Bitbucket. You can even use Dropbox. You can even use, use a local Git repository, but I'm going to use Bitbucket in my selection right here. GitHub is the same step-by-step but I'll use Bitbucket because that's a private repo. I want to prepare myself for saving these credentials, right? So here we go. I already logged in. You might have to log in by clicking this guy. He'll say, please log in, blah, blah, blah. And you'll log into your Bitbucket or GitHub account. And if you need to change account, you have to remember to log out first. But it all it's all explained right here, so I don't want to do it right now. I'm already logged in. Next, I select to choose my project. I only have one project available, and that's a REST API. Notice, that's just this project, right? If I went for GitHub, it would be the same thing. Let me just try and show you this just for the fun of it. Um, instead of Bitbug, let me choose GitHub. Again, it picks GitHub. And here I can now choose the project that I want to use. Right? It's really not a big, big thing. Very simple way to do it. Back to Bitbug. Choose your project. In my case, the project is going to be the REST API. And then I need to choose a branch. And the branch is going to be the master branch as default. If you didn't branch your solution, it's the master branch. And then the last thing I need to do is say, okay, and wait. Because now it's going to actually grab the, the actual files from Bitbucket it's, or GitHub. It's going to take the files and try and actually run the service, just like if you made a build on your local machine like we did earlier. And it's going to plan, try and deploy this guy, grab the NuGet packages it needs. That's going to happen in the build process as well. 
if everything runs, it's going to connect to our database in the cloud that we built earlier. And if that runs, everything is just up and running. What? Yes, that's all I had to do. So let's just have a look if it actually worked. Now I can go here and deployment options again. And then it'll actually show if the build is running right now. Look at this, it's doing the initial commit. That's the latest build I did on my Bitbucket solution. It would say whatever you put in the comment right here. And while this is twirling, it's not done. So let's just wait until this is done. While you're waiting for this, you might get some pop-ups or before this, you might get some pop-ups asking if it's okay for Azure to use Bitbucket and you have to say yes, Azure can use Bitbucket. Okay, so in the end, it should look like this. You get a check mark here. If there's an error, I'll try and make an error later, but that means that something went horribly wrong on your commit. Um, but let's just see, right now it went well, so let me click this guy and you can actually start looking at who committed, what was committed. You can get a lot of information here. Everything seemed to be running. So what I'll do now is I'll go back to my app service. I'll go back to my CS27 here. And now you'll actually, in the overview, you'll get information about how you can start using it. And there we go. Here's my new REST API right here. And I just clicked it. And remember this one points to my actual database, the other one. So it shouldn't be a problem here to actually say right away, slash API slash customers. Let's see if we can get some customers back. This should work because it's a GET request. And there we go. My REST API is live. See the next lesson where I'll try and redeploy this a few times and show you guys how we can fix it when it's broken. Have fun.